Hello, my fellow forgiven sinners. Grace and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We've just celebrated a wonderful 4th of July. We are truly blessed to live in a country like this, aren't we? A country where we can enjoy so much prosperity and freedom. It's, it's really unique in world history. And of all the blessings that we enjoy in this country, we certainly ought to be thankful for the freedom to practice our religion. We're able to share our God's word and live our faith in Jesus without fear of persecution. It's curious, though, that after we have celebrated this freedom, this freedom from religious persecution, today we celebrate the seventh Sunday after Pentecost. It's a day when we focus on how faith reacts to persecution. Jesus has warned us that if the world persecuted him, they will certainly persecute us, his followers, as well. We find that God even promises to bless us whenever we do undergo persecution. Today, let's ask a serious question. Is our general freedom from persecution the result of a special blessing from God, or is it a judgment? Are we free from persecution, or are we avoiding persecution because we are not being faithful to God? In the readings for this Sunday, the Gospel reading specifically from Mark chapter 6, we hear that Jesus was rejected by those who should have known him best. The people who knew Jesus their whole lives ended up being the ones who wanted nothing to do with Jesus. They remembered Jesus when he was a cute little boy. They lived near his family. Many of them had even probably heard the rumors about the strange occurrences with Jesus' birth. There were rumors that Mary was actually pregnant before she married Joseph, right? And this Jesus, this Jesus there, Jesus, is supposed to be some great teacher, some great miracle worker? Yeah, no way. The problem was this. They thought they knew Jesus so well that they didn't take him seriously. Many of us have known Jesus our whole lives. We've been his brother ever since those drops of baptism graced our heads. Many of us have heard his word at least once a week for years. Sometimes, however, familiarity breeds contempt. Knowing Jesus as long as many of us have, we need to ask ourselves, do we still take Jesus seriously? In the reading from Mark chapter 6, Jesus was shocked by the unbelief of the people in his hometown. Notice, throughout the Gospels, people are shocked at Jesus' miracles. Calming the storm? That's shocking. Healing diseased people with mere commands? Incredible. Raising the dead? Absolutely astonishing. But what is it that shocks and amazes Jesus? What astounds him? Unbelief. Unbelief shocks and amazes Jesus. If Jesus came to be with you today, would he find the faith that he expects? Or would he be shocked by our unbelief? We have all this freedom in our country to be able to practice our religion without fear, but what do we do with that freedom? Do we use it to spread the gospel of Jesus to as many people as possible so that more and more people can know Jesus as their Savior and be with us eternally in heaven? Or do we use our freedom to hide our Christianity, to keep it a purely private thing? Do we use our freedom to live just like the most non-Christian people in our country? I don't think it's a secret that the early Christian church faced a whole lot of persecution. But it's amazing to hear what the enemies of Christianity tell us about those Christians. There's an amazing quote from, again, an enemy of the early church, a man named Lucian of Samosata, I believe it's pronounced, who wrote, These deluded creatures, again, talking about Christians, have persuaded themselves that they are immortal and will live forever, which explains their contempt of death and willing self-sacrifice so common among them. 
It was impressed upon them by their lawgiver that from the moment they are converted, that they deny the gods of the Greeks, that they worship this crucified sage, and that they live after his law. They are all just brothers and sisters. They all take his instructions completely upon faith, with the result that they despise all the worldly goods and hold them in common ownership. So that any adroit and scrupulous fellow who knows the world has only to get among these simple souls and his fortune is quickly made. I heard that quote in a sermon from a fellow pastor down in Milwaukee. He went on to explain that this Lucian was making fun of Christians with these words, or at least he thinks he's making fun of these Christians. He says, look at these crazy people. They, they look at their lives and think that they are bulletproof. They don't seem to fear anything. Morons. They just believe everything Jesus says. They don't even second guess or question anything Jesus said. They look at their possessions at the, as if they weren't theirs and it belonged to everyone else. And so they share it with everyone else. Morons. Do people criticize you that way? Do people criticize me that way? Yeah, you know, that Jason guy, I've never seen him anxious or worried about anything. He never rationalizes or, or second guesses anything Jesus teaches. He just does it wholeheartedly because he's so convinced that someone who died for him loves him so much. And someone who rose from the dead actually knows what he's talking about. And so he just wholeheartedly follows him. And he does it joyfully. He never looks at any of his stuff as his stuff, but he shares it with anyone and everyone. You know, I, I really wish people did criticize me like that. Just imagine for a second, what if we got a bunch of people to live just like that all together? What if just five people in your church or 20 or 50 or 100 people in your church, what if they all just started living like that together? What if we are, were all just so joyful in the power of the resurrection that we didn't fear anything? What if we were so eager to carry out Christ's will that we didn't second guess, we didn't need to be convinced, we just did it joyfully and wholeheartedly? What if we didn't look at our possessions as our own, but as opportunities to share with those who are in need? I think the rest of the world would look at us as if we were crazy, but I think they would also think it was beautiful. I think they would look at us and say, you know, really, that's the way life is supposed to be. Maybe the reason we aren't persecuted isn't because of the freedom we have. Maybe it's because we are not being faithful to Jesus. Maybe the reason we aren't persecuted is that we act no different than the unbelieving world around us. We're just as anxious worried and terrified as those who don't have any hope in Christ. We disobey and despise God's commands for our lives very much like those who openly reject Christ. We spend our lives amassing wealth and possessions for ourselves instead of seeing and using them in the way that God calls us to, to be generous and to cheerfully give. Now, if we belonged to any other religion, We'd have to throw in the towel and accept our damnation for our wretched unfaithfulness. But Jesus is different. Jesus is unique. He is the God of grace. He is the one who gave himself for our selfishness. He gave up the unlimited freedom of his deity to become a slave in our place. He faithfully obeyed his Father's will by going to the cross to pay for all of our unfaithfulness. Every time we repent, every time we ask for forgiveness, Jesus is right there, ready to offer his grace and receive us back again. Such is the grace of our God. Such is his undeserved love for us sinners. Let's learn to live like that. Let's learn to see ourselves through God's grace. What do we have to fear when God Almighty loved us enough to die for us? What better life could be lived than one which follows the path Christ 
laid out for us. What better use could we make of our possessions than to use them for God's glory, for the good of others, and for the spread of the life-changing, even eternity-changing gospel of Jesus? Dear friends, let's admit that we have been slow to trust God, slow to follow our Savior, and slow to give him what he has commanded us. We are stubborn in our disobedience. We live our lives with the same fears, goals, and desires as the unbelieving world around us. May God grant us his Holy Spirit through the word and sacraments and lead us on a life that trusts in his grace, his word, and his will for our lives. Amen. Do not be afraid. Do not be